Hi, you seem to like the home automation projects, so let's do more of them. The MQTT protocol is a good solution since it's providing an easy communication between many IoT nodes. The central piece is a broker. A node connects to the broker and can subscribe to topics. The topics are created automatically. It can also publish to topics any kind of data. The broker distributes the data to any node that has subscribed to that. The publishing can be done at three quality levels. Messages are delivered at most once, at least once, exactly once, at rising communication overhead. So let's set up such an MQTT broker in our home network. We can use the Mosquito MQTT broker on a Linux mini computer. Mosquito? Seriously? Who came up with that name? This is really repulsive. I hate mosquitoes. <sighs> hmm. We can take the Raspberry. I think it might be even revision 1. I never did anything with it. <coughs> what else do we need? An SD card and a power supply should do. We also need a keyboard, a mouse and a screen to set it up. First of all, we need to prepare a system image. But you can skip this step if you already have one running. We can download the system image from here and use Etcher to burn it to the SD card. The current image with a graphical user interface needs at least an 8 gig SD card. Etcher is available for different operating systems. We can download it here. The links can be also found on the project page, which is linked in the description. There is no need to extract the huge image after downloading. Etcher supports also zip files. I put my SD card in, start Etcher, select the downloaded image and confirm. The SD card will be completely overwritten, so don't use that one with the wedding pictures on it. By default Etcher wants to validate the image. It might fail there. Don't bother, I got this every single time for that image. It still works fine. We can even turn off the validation in the settings. Writing the image takes a while, so grab a cup of coffee and connect the Raspberry to your network, screen, keyboard and mouse. Put the SD card in your Raspberry and connect it to the power via USB or another 5V power supply. When it's booted, you simply open the terminal and type sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get install mosquito. That's it, the broker is up and running. It's also automatically started whenever your Raspberry is powered up. The host address is the IP of the Raspberry. You can get it if you type ifconfig. The port is 1883 by default. And you can access the broker without a username and password. Like that, it works without any problems if you just want to try things. For a small test, I made two nodes that are playing ping pong over MQTT. But wait, we have to make it a little bit more bulletproof by fixing the IP and adding users and passwords. The IP address of the Raspberry Pi is not really fixed. Our router assigned that IP to our Raspberry not really permanently. It probably will get the same address every time, but that's not guaranteed. The Raspberry might also be reached with the host name raspberrypi.local. But the problem here is that not all systems support multicast DNS. <coughs> So we might need the fixed IP as fallbacks anyways. To let the router give the Raspberry the same IP address every single time, we have to tie it to the MAC address of the Raspberry, which is unique. To do this we have to log in into the router using a browser. The default address and login is often shown on the back side of the device. If not, you might try 198.168.0.1. If this doesn't work, you have to search the internet for your specific model. Logged in, we have to find the list with the connected clients. There is the Raspberry and its MAC address. Now we have to find the DHCP settings. The DHCP server assigns the IPs. There. You can either type the MAC address manually and the IP address you like, or you might even get a convenient option to select the connected device directly and apply. Now our Raspberry Pi should get the same IP address every time. We can repeat this also for our IoT devices like the ESP modules. This way we can label them and access them easily remotely. Pooh, I know this part was really dull. Hang on, we are almost there. 
This is just something we have to do once. After that automating our home is a piece of cake. Now let's add a minimum of security to our MQTT broker. With anonymous access anyone in our local network can mess around with our stuff. So let's protect the broker by adding a password file like this. We open the terminal again, change the directory cd slash etc slash mosquito and type sudo mosquito underscore password minus c to create password file looney as the first user. Adding another user can be done with the option minus b. We can also type the password directly in the command line like this. Removing users can be done with the option minus D. Using this command line tool, our passwords are stored non-readable in the password file. To enable the user file, we need to change the configuration file of Mosquito. Therefore, we need to open it in an editor. sudo nano mosquito.conf and we add the lines allo underscore anonymous false password underscore file slash etc slash mosquito slash password file. Control O and return to store the file. Control X to exit nano. The simplest way to apply the changes is to reboot. From now on any connections will be refused without a valid username and password. There are also some features to support secure connections to our broker. But that is a topic for another day. Now that the MQTT broker is up and running we can start creating cool home automation projects. I'm also updating my devices like the main switch to Mongoose OS and MQTT. The MQTT support is built in. It can't get any simpler than that. And it's also really responsive. The setup details, code, parts, apps can be found on the project page which is linked in the description. Coming up next will be how to make a cheap ass washing machine smart. Subscribe to not miss it and also check out my other projects. See you soon!